Insomnia is a sleep disorder that affects millions of people. According to the National Institutes of Health, every year about 60 million Americans suffer from insomnia. Studies also suggest that it's just as common in other parts of the world as well. 68-year-old Lorraine Chase was diagnosed with breast cancer several years ago. During this time of treatment and worry, Lorraine experienced insomnia. Prior to this, her sleep patterns were normal. I really did sleep well. I really always slept well. And then, you know, once in a great while I'd have a problem, but not, you know, not very often. Lorraine's lack of nighttime sleep was causing many daytime consequences. Probably because of fear and, and everything, I was tired a lot. I mean, really, really tired. And so I would fall asleep. As I said, sometimes I'd be cooking dinner and I would just stop and tell my husband, I'm too tired, I can't do this, and I'd go sleep. But then at night, maybe I wouldn't be able to sleep well. And so I was sleeping a lot, but not anything regular. And that kept going for almost a year. In addition to having anxiety about her cancer, Lorraine may also have been experiencing sleep difficulties related to her age. It's all the other things that go along with aging that contribute to poor sleep. It's not aging per se that's causing the sleep problem. So as I said, the medical problems, the psychiatric problems, all the medications that we need to take for our medical problems also affect sleep. So throughout her treatment for breast cancer, Lorraine Chase experienced poor sleeping habits. I think I was getting about six hours sleep, but I'd stay in bed because I knew I was still tired and I wanted to sleep. So I would stay in bed and hopefully go back to sleep. So it was sort of on and off, on and off. So I didn't cope well with not sleeping. For Lorraine, the stress of dealing with cancer treatment coupled with fatigue from a lack of restorative sleep would lead to a vicious cycle that doctors say is quite common. You now have developed this negative conditioning of what we call psychophysiological insomnia or primary insomnia. You know that when you get into bed, you can't sleep, and sure enough, you can't. For most people, the best first step in fighting insomnia is to seek medical advice. When we have patients with insomnia, the, the first approach we take is a behavioral therapy, usually something called cognitive behavioral therapy, which has two components. It's got the behavioral educational component that deals with poor sleep habits, and it has the cognitive component, which deals with maladaptive or dysfunctional thoughts that the person has. Lorraine now practices several of these sleep strategies and has a better understanding of some of the do's and don'ts associated with getting a good night's sleep. Whenever you change a habit, it takes effort. What's really important for me is that I don't go to bed till I go ready to go to sleep. The solution that worked best for Lorraine was cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT. However, CBT is only one possible approach and may not be the answer for all patients. Also, CBT is not readily available because only a limited number of physicians practice this therapy. In many cases, the standard medications used to treat insomnia can help patients get a better night's sleep.